So, um, one of the things that as a developer it is really important to know is to work with the right tools. Uh, it's not really uh, good for anybody uh, to just know the syntax of things if the, some of the tools are not really learned. And this topic is not really that broad that I'm not sure that it's even taught in any other classes. So I wanted to add a little addendum, a freebie if you will, of um, dedicating some time to learning and understanding some basics of Git and why it's important. And the main thing is and why it's important. So uh, in our project uh, that we had developed in, in the last class where we had a model view controller of uh, an, that something that interacted with uh, an open endpoint, which is open air, uh, this um, tool connects uh, with this tool connects with the API of open air and it just um, allows us to pull data that is about air quality in different parts of the world so right now we're just pulling uh, the countries where we have things available and it's a very simple application um, so the idea of having uh, a version control system or a VCS is that it will allow us to control what are the changes step by step that were made to our software or to the things that we are writing. And it's really important in the cases where you're collaborating with other people. Also, it is really important when you are when you just want to keep track of what are the things that you did and when were the changes when they happened. So um, IntelliJ, um, being the tool that we're using in this class, uh, has a VCS uh, tool built in into it. And I'm not going to do it right now with the command line because, again, I'm just trying to like focus on the tools as, a, as if it was a Java developer. So here in VCS, if, we don't, if our project has no previous VCS history, we can enable the control version integration system. And then we say something like select a version control system to associate with the uh, project root. I'm gonna select Git, because Git is a, the one that is the most popular, especially after um, software and packages like, uh, well, especially after portals like uh, GitHub. Um, so one of the things about Git is that when we are doing our copy of software, we can place it on a server um, we have a copy on the server and um, as opposed to other um, version control systems such as um, SDN Git downloads a full exact copy with every single version of it um, and brings an exact replica to the local machine This is our local machine where we are having a replica of the entire project. Um, and then once we are done with, the theory is that once we are done with that, we are going to send that replica back to the server where some difference is going to be calculated and then stored with the last version with the latest version so in in short we make a copy we make changes and we send it back to the server this sounds a lot simpler than what it really is doing on the background because on the background what it is doing is that it's performing a comparison of every single thing that happened in the history and then bringing if it can figure out, if it can figure it out itself, then it'll bring everything into the same timeline. If it can't, then it will allow, it will ask for some assistance. One of the important things to uh, to uh, know about a system like Git 
is that it has a tree-like structure. What that means is that in that tree, there are a bunch of different states or statuses of where the entire repository is. And it builds a little bit of a timeline where um, things can be either separated, like in this circle, which is the one that it's the blue versus the purple. Those are two different, uh, different uh, branches, as it is called in Git. So Git introduces a, the term of branches. So for example, this can be our dev, and this could be could be our dev and this could be our master and what that means is that we can split the code base from um, this this guy that is marked by the number one split that code base and the work on two different projects by two different users where the timeline keeps happening on both ends as more changes happen, so let's label this one as, as let's label this guy as change one, this one change two, and then we can say that this one is A and change B. The history on these two commits will be properly merged against the history of these two commits in the in this um, node that it's on history of the number three. Um, and there are more complicated iterations. You can have like a branch from a branch and things like that. So Git allows us to manage all those and track all those changes. Okay, so after we have created our initial uh, version control system, then we can, um, just as we know uh, with the server and client, for initializing the copy would be clone. A clone brings, brings down the copy for the first time. Then, as we are retrieving and pushing updates, we do operations like pull or push. When we are um, doing operations that we need to start a new branch, like in this case, then we do git checkout. branch will list all the versions git commit will insert a new list of changes um, merge will bring two branches together So now that we're familiar with some of the some of the commands, um, we can see that update is going to pull. This is going to commit. So if we add these, all these files that are in red, are files that we haven't added to our version control system. So in here, we can find our Git menu, and the first time that we're going to add them. To the project we're going to do git add same thing we're going to do so we added this and let's just do git add at the source level of the entire project we should do git add and then everything will be in green meaning that it's it's ready to be added so um 
one of the things that we want to do is that right now we have a full copy on our local machine but we need to actually send it to the rem to a remote server uh, well what we should do is take advantage of tools like github so if you go to your github page after you register for an account you can actually go into this plus sign where it says new repository and in this case we're going to do java 2 class 7 open air and i'm just naming it something so that way maybe just let's just add all these things it's not it's a name that it's not very friendly because it's too long but it describes what we are doing uh sample for my students on how to use git and how to um and to build an app using the open a air quality um, endpoints. So I'm going to create this repository. And right now it's an empty repository. So what I got to do to link my current repository to, the, to this data to this command I can either create a new command line and it's essentially what we just did. I'm going to go because we already have an existing repository. It already exists here. So I can go here in my terminal and paste the command. We can copy this thing, this other command. But one thing that we haven't done, and this is why it's re rejecting it, is that we added the, the, the files ready to be committed, but we haven't committed anything. So what we can do is that we can do a commit, click this commit thing, and it's going to just essentially select everything that we want for committing. So um, in our commit, we can see that all these files are being shown here. It's going to show the difference, but I'm going to focus that once we have a, an actual difference of files. Uh, this is just a message saying first commit to repository. And then we can just here. It has like a bunch of IntelliJ has a bunch of extra actions, but right now I'm just going to leave it empty because I just want to commit this. And the first time that you do that, it's going to ask you who you are. So you can do such thing. And now we can, finally push something as the origin to the master branch on the remote so now if we go back to git we can go again into our project and we're going to see all the sources here and with one commit that is the first commit to rep uh, to the repository when you see each commit history you're going to see that on the left hand side it has what it was before and then what it was ap after each line in green is an addition each line in red is a subtraction so in this case because none of these existed it's just marking as if it was a full addition of absolutely everything so then why don't we go and make a small change to something why don't we just do some primary stage dot um let's see uh let's see if we can change something set resizable we're going to change our thing to set resizable and then we're going to change it to false. And let's assume that this is the change that we want to um, go for. Since this file has already been added, it's not at a green status anymore. It is. It shows us as blue because that ha shows that a change a change happened. So if we were going to do commit, it's going to show this as an addition with the difference where on the left hand side you see the the code as it was and the right hand side is with the new addition now let's assume that we want to re delete this line and we save the file and then do commit you're going to see that here in our local repository in github it's re it appears as red here appears as blue it is actually showing that this line disappeared in this version while this line appeared and it has obviously two differences, the addition and the subtraction. It's worth noting that some of these stuff that he here we have in the before commit, it can 
perform code analysis, make sure that you don't have left of stuff, update the copyright in your files, clean up certain things like white spaces, things like that, rearrange code and reformat code just to make it look pretty. Um, so now let's go back and just return it to where it was. If we want to try to do a commit, it's saying that there's nothing to commit. In our VCS menu, we can see all the other options that we have that we discussed on the, on the slides, like branch, uh, merge commit, tag. Sometimes the tag is useful, especially for generating releases. Stash changes. Stash changes is really useful where you want to store something to use it later, but you're not ready to commit the file. Committing means that you are going to have those changes stored in the Git repository forever. As you're working on stuff and you're changing, Git just shows differences if there's anything else to show. But for example, here, those two deletions is what it's being marked. So we, it is not committed. And when you have a dirty repository in here, it shows us at blue. In the command line, it shows if you do a Git status, it shows that the file was modified and the files that are not even being tracked. Now, sometimes in our projects, we really don't want to have certain files to be tracked. And that is where, um, how do we prevent a file like, like this out from being committed? There's this file that it is part of our Git repository um, that it is called uh, git ignore. We do bi git ignore and they say out the the out file it doesn't exist. We can then say adding and we are going to commit and say um, adds git ignore file to repo. So it's dot git ignore at the source of the at the top of the repository, and then we can commit. And now that we have a remote branch, we can push and say that we're going to send it from our local master to origin, which is the remote uh, server, and the branch master. And voila, once it's done, we're done with our commit.